All right, so today I'm going to give you my opinion on why y'all should be breaking out the crawfish. It's like the first week of March. We've had a little bit of warm weather. Water's starting to warm up. It's about 50 degrees, and the crawfish should start emerging from their little burrows. And the bass want to eat them. Looks pretty good. This is where we're going to start. Let me find a spot and I'll show you guys what I'm going to use. Alright, so the bass have been in their winter holes all winter long. And uh, right now they're hungry. It's starting to warm up. They're coming out to feed so they can get ready for their upcoming booty call. And uh, the crawfish are coming out. And you know bass love crawfish. These are the uh, crawfish I'm going to use. I got a little uh, creature type craw. A little beaver type craw and then they're just regular old crawfish now, if you're wondering about the color uh, I wish I had more of these um, because the crawfish when they emerge uh, they're orange pretty much this time of year in most part of the country all right y'all so if you've ever wondered why the bass pros they break out the uh, red and the orange rock crawlers wiggle warts during the late winter early spring it's because the crawdads crawfish whatever you want to call them uh, during the winter they hibernate they bury down deep into the holes and uh, wait for warmer weather and mu much of the country once you get below the surface the topsoil you run into this red orange clay and so they bury down into this and when they emerge in the spring late winter early spring they're covered in this orange red clay therefore red and orange rock crawlers and baits yeah, that stuff's sticky. So I try to find stuff with orange or red flake. If I can't find this. And I can't find this right now. It's sold out. So these things are killer this time of year. Mainly because of the color. Uh, the way I have the crawfish rigged is pretty simple. Um, you can use a jig head. I don't have any jig heads. So I'm just using a uh, quarter ounce worm weight. On a uh, one odd EWG hook and I have the hook point buried into the bait but because out here you're just going to get hung up uh, you'll be getting stuck on rocks and everything and I'll be losing all my hooks I do have a tendency to lose a couple fish with this because this doesn't pop sometimes and you don't hook the fish but uh, I'd rather not lose all my hooks so that's the way I got it rigged you can put a uh, bobber stop here if you don't want your weight sliding up and down. I don't have any bobber stops. You can also take another piece of line and do a snell knot. Just put your little snell knot above the, the weight to keep it from sliding. Or you can just take your little split shot. That's the smallest one I have. And just pinch it above the weight to keep it from moving. But I'm just going to let it be free. Let it be loose. Some options in case you don't have all the stuff like me. But you still want to fish. It makes a difference when you got good line. Nice small mouth right there. That makes a heck of a difference. Bass like crawfish. It's got a weird scale pattern. But. 
you got some sharp teeth. No, you ain't. Hi. Well, he freed himself. <laughs> Jeez. That little guy. Looks like he's got a crawdad antenna sticking out of his mouth. In the back of his throat. He's got a little antenna sticking out. He's been eating crawdads. Pretty fish. There you go. Don't have to get me all wet. Alright, so what I've been doing is I've been hitting all the coves because they got the drainage running down. Good place for crawfish, right? But I just want to show you guys this cave. It's pretty cool. Who knows what lives in those holes? Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. <laughs> That's a nice one. Check him out. That's a chunk. You are a chunk, my friend. Oh, you got that good. You weren't going nowhere. Look at that beauty. Open up the sea. Oh. You got any crawfish in there? No, you were hoping to have some. Beautiful fish. Don't be scaring off everybody else now. I want a couple more. Back he goes. Crawfish, my friend. Crawfish. Crawfish. <laughs> After all that, I lost the fish. Just destined to be what today? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, pants were just starting to dry too. Another beauty. Look at that. Might have the sun in your face. There we go. Got any crawfish in there? No. He was trying.
I hear your buddy calling my name. They are on fire today. All right, so I'm gonna do this stretch one more time. It's either gonna be one more bass or one more lure. Whichever comes first. Hopefully it's a bass. Hopefully we can catch that big boy again. He was pulling drag like crazy. And my drag is not loose. <laughs> now that is a piglet small mouth Look at that sucker. I think that's the one I was uh, I had on earlier. Just pulling drag like crazy. Little piglet. Well, the bass took pity on me and stopped biting. But as I was walking up, one big one splashed. So they're trying to get me to go back. So y'all, here we are, beginning of March. If you don't know what to throw on, throw on a crawfish. I must say that I caught, I think all my fish on this. Every single one of them. This is what I kept on all day. Yeah, I know a lot of us like a uh, bank fishermen. When we're doing, when we're doing bank fishing, we always uh, think that the boats have the advantage, which they do have quite an advantage. But uh, I saw four boats come in today into the into this cove where I was, and uh, they all did their little scan, turned around and left. I don't know what kind of day they had, but I had an awesome day. <laughs> the thing about bank fishing is you were able to take a, a, a an area and pick it apart, and once you know where the the fish are. The fish are pretty much there constantly. You might hook one, little while, wait a little while, go back, there'll be another one there. And that's exactly what I was doing today. I was fishing the same spots over and over again. Everywhere I got bit, if I didn't catch them, if I lost them, then I would go off somewhere else, wait a while, and then come back to that spot. Sure enough, there's a, if not the same fish, then another fish. So bank fishing, you, you do have an advantage that you're able to pick the area apart and learn it. Just my two cents. All right, so I got a date with a creek and some catfish. So I'm off to my next adventure. You guys, thanks for watching. Tight lines, everyone. See you next time. I'm going to squish all the way home. <laughs> my boots are full of water. Yeah. Uh.